Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is another edition of Fresh Red Kills. So Fresh Red Kills is where I talk about the books that I have recently read, and sometimes that I'm reading. Uh, in this uh, half. I'm going to split this up into two halves. I'm going to be talking about Thomas Jefferson Sally Hemings, An American Controversy by Annette Gordon-Reed. And in the second half, um, which I'll upload as a different video, I'm going to talk about the books that I've been reading for the Reading Africa 2022 challenge. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in that video. Um, you'll probably notice first, though, that there's a new background. If you follow my channel, uh, we did finally get some new furniture in our room, our bedroom, and uh, changed my whole desk area as well. So I have a, a desk behind me, um, and then I have these two bookcases flanking it. Um, and I'm loving the setup so far. Yeah, I do have this empty space behind me. Uh, we don't know what we're going to do with that yet. Maybe we'll put shelving in. Maybe we'll just hang a portrait or a picture or something like that. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. We haven't decided, and I don't honestly foresee us deciding anytime soon. So we might have that blank space for a while, but I don't mind. I, I kind of like... Um, you know, the lack of distraction there when I'm trying to work. Um, so anyway, getting back to the reading. Uh, for those who don't know, maybe don't know much about American history, uh, Thomas Jefferson, of course, a founding father, right? Um, author of the Declaration of Independence. He was our third president. Um, and there's a certain irony, of course, to Thomas Jefferson, uh, that though he authored the Declaration of Independence, which celebrates and you know, proclaims inalienable rights of freedom and liberty. Um, he, of course, was a slaveholder, uh, and he had many, many slaves. Um, you know, a huge, a huge quantity of persons that he owned. And he's certainly a contradictory character, uh, and he's, he's quite interesting. And I'll kind of get into my thoughts on that a little bit. But uh, he was accused um, during his... Uh, there were earlier accusations, but I think it was when he was running for re-election in the early 1800s um, for a second term as presidency uh, that a journalist named Callender, uh, last name Callender, um, who was at first kind of on Jefferson's good side, and then he had a falling out with Jefferson, and he went on the attack, and he published a series of articles that um, detailed Thomas Jefferson's affair with his slave, Sally Hemings. And of course, they denied this um, publicly. Uh, but Sally Hemings' children uh, did end up claiming that, no, they were the children of Thomas Jefferson. Okay. Um, and eventually, earlier this century, um, DNA evidence basically confirmed that. Um, that Sally Hemings' children were a part of the Jefferson line, not the Carr family line, like um, some of Jefferson's white descendants had claimed. Um, the Carrs were essentially nephews of Jefferson that used to hang out at Monticello. Um, and, of course, the most likely candidate for them to be a part of Jefferson's line is Thomas Jefferson himself being the father. So DNA evidence has basically confirmed uh, what people suspected, that Jefferson had an affair uh, with one of his slaves. Um, now, the more you read in this book, um, and Gordon Reed, I think, does a very good job of digging into their psychology. This is not a psycho history at all. She's um, She has a legal background. She's taken a very lawyerly approach to this. Uh, but she never forgets that these are human beings, and human beings are filled with contradictions and hypocrisies. And um, Jefferson, you know, I think there's so much to admire about him, um, but he was certainly in an awkward position. Uh, nevertheless, what she does here is explore that relationship or that controversy surrounding the supposed relationship at the time. Um, that DNA evidence uh, came after this book was published. So what Annette Gordon-Reed does in this book is it's kind of a historiographic look at it. She looks at the various people who are involved in this story. Um, let's see, let's look at the table of contents. We've got Madison Hem Hemmings, which is uh, one of Sally's children. Um, James Callender, the person who wrote the articles, who was against Jefferson. Uh, you've got the Randolphs and the Cars, some of Jefferson's relatives, Thomas Jefferson, Sally Hemings. She looks at each of these figures, and she looks at what does one side say about it? You know, those who say, yes, there was an affair, and those who deny that there was. What are their claims? 
what is the evidence for those claims? And also, how have historians talked about it uh, from Jefferson's time really up until the present day? And one of the things that she finds continuously is how much racism plays a role in the way historians have talked about this. Um, talked about not just Jefferson, assumptions about him, uh, but also about Sally Hemings. Um, they have gotten her very wrong over time, uh, certainly underestimating her, I think, quite a bit. And through analysis of evidence and through reason, she has to do, she does have to do a lot of conjecture in this, but she does a very good job laying out her reasoning. And I think it's, it certainly is quite convincing. Uh, through all of that, um, she does really, I think, without a doubt, convince the reader <laughs> that uh, Jefferson and Sally Hemings, yes, they did have an affair. And that affair lasted for over 30 years. Um, this is not like a one-time thing. Um, this was, it seems to be, a relationship. Um, you know, I think that there are so many aspects of this story that people find uncomfortable. Um, of course, you have a, a slave master, you know, uh, having children with his slave. There is certainly a power dynamic there that I think makes us uncomfortable. Uh, but there are also other things that are insinuated with this relationship when you really look at it. Um, that, you know, maybe there was actually something of a caring relationship between these two. And that brings up other discomforting ideas with slavery. Um, we can never discount, you know, or uh, underestimate just how horrible slavery was. Um, but that doesn't mean that Jefferson couldn't have been attracted to a slave and that a slave could not have been attracted to him. Uh, one of the things that I think was very fascinating was um, her discussion of Sally Hemings. So I, I will say, once I, I'm not going to go through each detail, but I will say because of her approach um, with looking at the evidence uh, in the beginning of this book, especially when she deals with Madison, James Callender, the Reynolds and the Cars, it does feel like you're retreading the same ground over and over again because she's continuously going back and forth to different evidence, or no, sorry, not different evidence, the same evidence. So you feel like you're hearing the same thing quite a bit. But when she hits those chapters on Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings, I think I was really drawn into the book at that point. Um, and she does a fantastic job discussing them. Um, and the way that she describes them, you know, why she basically gives reasons for why Jefferson would have actually been attracted to her. Um, why she would have actually maybe been a pretty ideal companion for him during this time. Uh, Jefferson's wife had died fairly young. Um, you know, I think they had had two daughters together, but she dies and he's still a young man, but she had promised, so she had made him promise before she died that he wouldn't remarry. Uh, he was still a, a young guy overall. Um, Sally Hemings was his wife's half sister. Uh, she was said to be light-skinned with long flowing hair and incredibly beautiful. And apparently she looked a lot like her half-sister. Uh, I think there's a lot of reasons to think that Jefferson would find her a very convenient, uh, mate. Um, she also spent time in Paris with Jefferson. They would have had that connection, that, that memory together. Um, and Jefferson, according to Madison Hemings, one of Sally's sons and Jefferson's sons, uh, he had promised her that he would free their children when they turned 21. Those are the only young slaves that he ended up freeing uh, in their 20s. Everybody else was older and um, had already given him a lifetime of service before he freed any of them. Uh, a lot of things point to the fact that, you know, yes, was this an equal relationship? Obviously not. Of course not. It was a slave-slave master. It could not have been. Were relationships between men and women equal <laughs> during this era? They were not. Um, I don't know if that would have... You know, uh, if we could expect an equal relationship um, to have occurred, even if Sally was not a slave. Um, and I'm bringing up things that Annette Gordon-Reed, not not the male-female dynamic. That's something that I was thinking as I read that I thought I was surprised she didn't include more of. Um, but she does give us a picture that's very sympathetic to both Sally Hemings and to Thomas Jefferson. Uh, she talks about how, of course, repulsed she is by some of the things that Jefferson wrote, some of the things he said, some of the things he did. But at the same time, she openly admits that she is still an admirer of him. There is so much to admire about him. Um, and I find myself in that same situation. I think of all the founding fathers, Jefferson is the one that I am pulled to the most. I think because I see so much of myself in him, um, in certain ways, similar interests, similar passions, similar worldviews, uh, and he was an extraordinary individual. Um, you know, what he accomplished and 
the way that he he helped to shape our country um, is it's almost immeasurable um, in, in good and bad, of course. Uh, you know, the things that he wrote about African-Americans uh, were certainly harmful to them for well over a century after the fact. Um, but she describes, I think she, she says, uh, she talks about at one point in the book how there are racists and then there are racists. And she talks about it as though there's like a spectrum. And, um, you know, basically you have your, your dyed in the wool, uh, hardcore racists, you know, who under no circumstance would they even be polite to somebody, you know, who was non-white. Uh, but then you also have on the other side of the spectrum, racists who have racist ideas, but are generally good people. Um, and who are not rude personally, you know, who will give you the time of day, who will show you respect when it's shown to them. And, um, Jefferson, she says, is that latter type of person. Uh, she thinks that he was generally a good person who, of course, was caught in ugly aspects of his time period. Um, and I think that's why this is such an interesting thing, you know, and he's such an interesting character. I think that for me, at least, and I think for many, Jefferson kind of holds up a mirror to ourselves and we see reflected back at us the good and bad within us. Um, and, you know, it, it accentuates those aspects of ourselves that maybe we don't like very much. I think some people are repulsed by Jefferson for that reason. Uh, I think others choose to ignore it um, and only focus on the good. Uh, I don't ignore it. I don't ignore the ugly aspects, but it does humanize him for me. And it gives me instruction on how I don't want to be. Um, while other aspects of his life inspire me to be better. Um, so... Anyhow, uh, Jefferson is interesting. Sally Hemings uh, is certainly an interesting character as well throughout all of this. Um, and I would recommend this for people who are interested in looking at the evidence that's involved in this whole controversy. Uh, like I said, it begins, it, it kind of feels like you're retreading some ground in the beginning. Um, it is an academic work. It is sometimes feels kind of legalistic, like she's laying out a case. Um, and that can get a little bit dry sometimes. But as I said before, once she starts really talking about Jefferson and Sally Hemings, I think that it really shines. And I really found myself pulled right in and uh, really enjoyed it. So those are my thoughts, uh, as jumbled as they might have been. Um, and I apologize for that. On uh, Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings in American Controversy by Annette Gordon-Reed. Um, and I will be posting a second half of this Fresh Red Kills episode, where once again, I'm going to talk about the Reading Africa 2020 books that I've been reading. Um, so anyhow, if you've read this, I would be fascinated to hear your thoughts as well. All right. As always, thank you, BookTube.